Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course aspects of biochemical engineering. In last couple of lecture I try to concentrate on two different aspects. One is uh, that chemical reaction kinetics and another is the reactor analysis. And uh, since uh, uh, that biochemical engineering and chemical engineering they are related, so uh, first we should know the ABC of uh, this uh, uh, chemical engineering and particularly reaction kinetics and the reactant analysis. Now with this information now we will enter into the uh, real topic and uh, today the topic that I am going to discuss that is kinetics of enzyme catalyzed reaction using free enzymes. Now as you know that in the microbial system if you comprise of uh, multi enzyme system, different enzymes, if they have metabolic pathways, in the meta metabolic pathways your substrate is degraded to different products. Now if you look at the metabolic pathways, the, the different steps, individual steps, they required individual enzymes. So uh, basically we consider the microbial system as a, as a multi enzyme system, so understand the microbial system better, first we should know what is enzymatic reaction kinetics. So this present lecture and couple of lectures I shall concentrate with this try to understand what we mean by uh, enzymatic reaction kinetics. And uh, first we shall have to know that, uh, that uh, what is called enzymes. Now if you look at the enzymes, uh, the globular protein that acts as a biological catalyst. Now what do you mean by globular protein? If you look at that, uh, if you look at uh, the structure of the protein, it is of two types. One is globular protein and there is fibrous protein. <coughs> now what is globular protein? It is randomly folded, you know this is like this, it is randomly folded. And when it folds randomly, some active site might be developed, maybe this active site is developed. And this configuration of this active site is similar to the structure of a particular substrate molecule. This is the enzyme and this is this. So you know then this substrate sit here at the active site and uh, react uh, to give the product. So but in a fibrous protein is not a fibrous uh, protein, this is kind of structure like this. So they have, now this, uh, this folded structure of the globular protein and this fibrous structure, this is mostly due to the hydrogen bond. And this hydrogen bond in between the R group, we know that 20 different amino acids are there, R group of 20 different amino acids in combination with amino and uh, carboxylic acid give, they make a folded structure. So this is how they form the uh, they form the active site. Now uh, uh, that uh, the role of a uh, uh, of the enzyme is a catalyst, and as you know, the catalyst role is the, they take part in the reaction, and they reduce the activation energy of the reaction, so that rate of reaction is increases, and after the reaction is over. It uh, it remain unaltered, so uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and and uh, one specific uh, feature of the enzymatic reaction is the enzymes are very specific with respect to substrate. Another thing I forgot to mention that as I told you that enzymes are globular protein, but not necessarily enzymes are protein. It may be some <coughs> pure organic molecules. And due to advancement of organic uh, chemistry, now it is possible to produce some kind of synthetic enzyme. Like I can give the example of RNAs. 
So another very important thing is that what you call the the nomenclature of the enzyme. Nomenclature means how we name the enzymes. Most of the enzymes you usually name ended by S. As for example, um, lipase, amylase, protease, like this. And uh, and but you know, the, there is some exceptional case where some enzyme's name is pepsin. As you know, pepsin is remaining in our stomach. This is renin. It is largely uh, used in the cheese making industry and trypsin. Uh, that is in, 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 in present in our intestine. So, uh, so the, we have the, uh, the usually the, the, the name of the enzyme is ended by S. Now, enzymes may be of two types. One is called endoenzymes and that is exoenzymes. The endoenzymes means they work within the cells. As for example, if you lo look at the amidon myelin pathway, if we, we have so many enzymes participating in the reaction, and most of the reactions are their endoenzymes. And all, and uh, but the exoenzymes is uh, basically it is a hydrolytic enzyme. The the organism this produces and it comes out of the cells and then interact with the with the substrate and substrate will undergo the hydrolysis and give the product. So this is the examples I can give you the enzyme that function within the cells, the metabolic enzymes like uh, cytochrome oxidase. Then we, we can, I can give the another example of phosphofructokinase of the immune myelo pathway. Enzymes catalyze reaction outside the cells. We have different hydrolytic enzymes like amylase, lipase and protease. Now I was taking, uh, telling about that how enzyme participate in the reaction. Now enzymes, it lowered the activation energy. If you look at this figure, that you know normal enzymatic re reaction, you require this much of, this much of activation energy. Uh, this normal, this, this is the normal activation energy that is required. Now when the presence of catalyst enzyme is there, the activation energy is requirement. So this is much less as compared to EA. So in a sense, uh, this activation energy requirement is very less. So, so if uh, enzymes present in the reaction mixture is accelerate the rate of reaction. The, pro, the only the thing is that after the reaction is over, the enzyme remains unaltered. But one thing I want to highlight here, it does not affect the reaction equilibrium. Now, whatever enzymes we have, it broadly it can be classified into six different types. As for example, we have uh, we have uh, oxidoreductase. This is one enzyme. Then transferase, another enzyme. Then hydrolase, that is another enzyme. Then lyase. Then isomerase. Then ligase. So all the enzymes, more or less, they fall under this category. Now, oxidoreductase is the enzymes which take part in the oxidation reduction reaction. What do you mean by oxidation reaction? You take out one oxy electron and reduction reaction will add in the electron to the molecules. The single replacement of this, you can see that, replace that uh, this is replacement that how it is taking place here. This is transferase. Hydrolysis means hydro this is water molecule, this is the substrate and when it hydrolysis, it uh, produces two compounds. I can give the example of sugar, when sugar hydrolyzes in presence of water, it produces glucose and fructose. Now another, another enzyme is called lyase. This undergoes a decomposition. The I have given a lot of examples here, the decarboxylase, hydrolase. This is how the reaction takes. Isomer is very interesting enzyme, which changes the functional group. As for example, glucose is converted to fructose and glucose has the aldehyde group and fructose has ketone group. So naturally that for this change, transformation, we required one enzyme, what we call glucose isomerase enzyme. Now, so this is the called isomerase. This, this, then we have ligases. Ligases means two molecules, they attach together. You can see this. This is how enzyme classification can be done.
Now, let me tell you that uh, uh, what are the different component present in the uh, normal enzyme enzymes. So, enzymes has two component. One is called apoenzyme. One is called apoenzymes, and another is the cofactors. Now, what do you mean by apoenzyme? Apoenzymes is the kind of we consider kind of it is the protein molecules, but this is inactive form. But the apoenzymes, I told you this this is inactive enzyme. This is not active, uh, so it will not uh, react with the substrate and give the product. But uh, in presence of cofactor, now cofactor uh, may be of two types. One is uh, organ inorganic co component when we have manganese ion uh, or uh, magne uh, uh, magnesium ion or you have zinc ion and co coenzymes this is non protein mole organic molecule like nadh fadh atp so those molecules we consider as a so, so coenzyme basically this is the organic molecule and uh, some other than organic molecule we consider also the cofactor or inorganic molecule now apoenzyme plus cofactor or coenzymes we call hollow enzyme. Hollow enzyme means active enzyme. Now, I can, uh, this is picturally can be represented like this. Now, if you look at the configuration of the substrate, this does not have any resemblance, much of resemblance with the configuration of the um, active site. So, as soon as that your coenzyme sits here, then the way you can, you can find it has a resemblance with the substrate. So, substrate can sit at the active site and give the uh, product. This is how apoenzyme is activated. Now, question comes how this active site formation takes place. This is very interesting. As you know that, uh, that uh, uh, we have 20 different uh, amino acids. Out of 20 different amino acids, R group of R group of, uh, of uh, eight different amino acids like aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamine, histidine, then lysine, methionine, serine, and threonine. And this uh, in combination with the amino and carboxylic acid group, uh, they, they form the, this active site. They form this active site, then substrate C here. This is, so, so here I want to highlight only one thing that protein with active site, we call it uh, enzyme and protein which does not have active site, we cannot call it uh, enzyme because enzyme should, should have, should react with the substrate and give the product. Now question come, how substrate and, uh, and, and enzyme, they interact with each other. There are three different hypotheses that we have that can be described that you know how substrate and enzyme they can interact with each other. First hypothesis is the lock and key hypothesis. So what is lock and key hypothesis? As you know that when you open a lock, the key should be proper. The lever we have in the, in the, in the lock, we have lever system and if your, your key does not fit in the lock, then you cannot open it. So, similar to uh, the lock and key hypothesis means the, the active side of the enzyme should be uh, the ditto, this is the same as the configuration of the substrate. So, that you can sit at the active site. If you sit properly at the active site, then you will give the product. Now, I can give you an example here. You can see that it is picturely demonstrated here that suppose this is the enzyme and this is the substrate and this has the disimbalance with the, the configuration of the substrate as a disimbalance with the configuration of the active sites. So, substrate can sit here and give the product. Now, others, uh, other two uh, may the hypothesis are one is called proximity effect. What do you mean by proximity effect? Proximity effect means when substrate approach to the active site because if you apparently when substrate uh, you look at the configuration of the, su the substrate and configuration of the active site, they are not uh, resembalance with each other. But as soon as the, the substrate approach to the active site, it uh, due to induction, 
there will be change in the configuration of the active site so that your substrate can see that the active site properly and give the product. I can give a very simple example here. You look at here that this is the substrate molecule. Let us assume that and this is the active site of the enzyme. So, we can, we can easily find out the configuration of the substrate and configuration of the active site. They are not same. But as soon as it, it approaches here, the configuration changes. So, the substrate molecule can seed properly and give the product. Now, another is the orientation effect. What do you mean by orientation effect? Orientation effect means suppose that when substrate, so uh, you know that enzyme, uh, I told you that, uh, that uh, enzyme with active sites, we call it uh, uh, protein with active site, we call it enzyme. Now, suppose uh, how the protein formation takes place uh, that due to polymer of amino acids. And we, I told you when I, I previously that that if the number of amino acid in between 20 to 50, then we call it peptide, and more than 50 amino acid we call it protein. The protein, you know, that is the polymer of amino acids. Now, uh, what is happening? That a tiny part, the small part of the protein molecule that is the active sites. So suppose the active site, it it is uh, your substrate is this side and active site is other side. So, as soon as your substrate approaches to, to the uh, enzyme, then the, or some orientation take place of the enzyme molecule so that substrate can sit properly at the active sites of the enzyme. So, this is the orientation effect the, and this is also taking place due to induction. Now, uh, but, uh, I told you that uh, enzymes are very specific as per activity is concerned. So, <clears throat> there are, you know, this specificity we can, we can, we can divide it into six different categories. One is called bond specificity and there is group specificity. One is bond specificity, another group specificity, substrate specificity, optical stereo specificity, geometrical specificity, and the cofactor specificity. I have given different examples here. As for example, amylase can hydrolyze alpha 1 4 glucoside glycosidic linkage because you might be knowing that alpha amylase act on the starch molecule. What is starch? Starch is a polymer of glucose which, which are bind together with the help of alpha 1 4 linkage. Now, group specificity that trypsin hydrolyzes the peptide bond uh, provided by the arginine and lysine. Then substrate specificity the lactase acts on lactose. I have given the example of another substrate specificity like glucose isomerase act on glucose. It cannot act on lactose, uh, glu fructose. The optical or stereo specificity means the L amino oxidase act only on uh, L amino acids. So, we know that two, two type of optical isomers is the L and D. So, L amino oxidase can act on L amino acid. What is geometrical specificity that the alcohol dehydrogenase can oxidize ethanol, methanol and propanol. Cofactor specificity means DNA polymerase is inactivate in presence of Mag mag magnesium ion. Now, next point that is uh, very important what do you call enzymatic activities. The how good and bad is the enzyme that can be ex expressed with the help of activity. Now, activity can be expressed in different ways. One is called IU. IU means international unit. What is IU? The micromoles of substrate degraded or micromoles of product form per milliliter of enzyme solution per minute. This is, this is, this is decided by the IUPAC, that is the international body, they decided the definition of IU. Now, if, I, if, I, if we express the enzymatic activity is 5 IU, 2 IU, 3 IU, then we still have to, we, we, we do not have to explain what we mean by IU, because this IU has been defined by the IUPAC. But if you, if you express in the unit that that is not IU, then you have to define. This may be in different way 
as I have given one example that either micromoles or microgram or milligram of substrate degraded per milliliter of enzyme per minute. You can explain the whatever things you like. Now, another activity we have we, that is we, that is called specific activity. What is specific activity? Micromoles of substrate degraded per milligram of protein per, per minute. Now, here I want to stress one thing. When you go for the specific activity, that implies that you know that uh, characteristics of the enzyme. That, that means you know that enzymes are good or bad. Actually, that uh, we can easily find out with the help of specific activity. But if you argue that it may vary because if you if you if you, if you dilute the enzyme solution, then IU may vary. But uh, but specific activity will remain constant. This determine the characteristics of the enzyme. Another is very important thing is the turnover number. Turnover number when the protein molecule is very big, it might there is a possibility it might be having more than one active site. In that case, the activity is expressed most of substrate degraded per active site of the enzyme per minute. And K cat equal to V max by E0. This is how we can express that. Now, Michael is maintained that propose one equation. This equation is V equal to V max S K M plus S. Now, this equation is purely on the basis of the correlation it is shown here. And this kind of correlation, if the correlation is this, and this, uh, this uh, Michael is maintained equation is not valid. Now, what does it tell? It tells at low substrate concentration when you are here, then then, then V it tends to V max. How, how V tends to V max? Uh, at low substrate concentration, then what is happening that uh, if you, this, this is low, then I can ignore as compared to this. Then this is constant, the V will be equal to constant into S and this is first order reaction. So, it follows the first order kinetics. Now, in case we, we uh, S is very high, then we can ign ignore that, then S S will cancel, then I can write V tends to V max. So, this is exactly happen here, the where V, uh, this is, this is then, then what is the reaction? Reaction followed a zero order kinetics, because V will be equal to K into S to the power zero, the so zero order kinetics. And maximum velocity of reaction is, is proportional to the uh, the initial enzyme concentration. Now, uh, so uh, Michael is maintained proposed this equation purely on the basis of correlation between uh, velocity of reaction and substrate concentration. Later on, the Briggs and Helen they proposed the enzymatic reaction kinetics to justify Michael is maintained equation. What they told the enzyme and substrate they reversibly react and form ES and when ES form, then it produce enzyme and product. Now, what do you mean by that? Suppose I told you that uh, when uh, your, uh, when your sub, uh, the substrate approaches to the active sites of the enzyme is supposed to sit at the active site. So, this sitting uh, phenomena is uh, maybe, uh, maybe like this some sit properly some split some some can sleep like this so this phenomena we consider as a reversible phenomena this this is cannot be irreversible but uh, whatever enzyme whatever substrate sits at the active sites of the enzyme that give the product so that is the irreversible reaction this is what uh, that you know Briggs and Hellem they propose and this is how the reaction can be expressed this is e plus s equal to e es and if, if, like this. Now, uh, rate of the, uh, the product formation. So, uh, what is our equation that we have? E plus S reversibly give yes. Am I right? And this gives irre irreversibly. It gives the E plus P. So, this is K one, and this is K minus one, and this is K two. The rate of product formation here, this is plus P, huh? right? Rate of product formation, 
uh, this is the different rate of product formation is what that k2 into es this is k2 into es but rate of formation of es is proportional to this is forward reaction this is backward reaction again this is degraded so it is k1 into e into s and k minus 1 es k2 into es so now now one thing we shall have to remember enzyme concentration any point of time e, e0 is the initial enzyme concentration equal to free enzyme plus bound enzyme this is the how, so e i concentration of e i can express that e0 minus es Now, uh, they, when they, when the Briggs and Hellem try to ju justify this equation, they uh, they have certain assumption that what they are saying, when you plot here, you see here plot is s by s zero versus time. The when this plot is like this, then then your uh, your uh, your this uh, quasi steady state condition is valid, and at the quasi steady state condition, d e s by d t, this should be equal to zero. Uh, but if if the relationship is like this, what uh, what is shown here, then your Michaelis Menten equation will not get the equi that quasi steady state condition is not valid. Now, what do you mean by quasi steady state condition? Quasi steady state condition means tends to steady state. It is not exactly steady state, but uh, the situation is going to the, the, to the steady. That is called quasi steady state. Now, this is uh, finally, uh, they have derived this equation and this is simple. I hope you can, all, you can all calculate this. This is shown here how it is done. And uh, what I wanted to want to point out this, uh, this value k minus 1 plus k2 by k1, this is called, uh, this is equal to km and uh, that uh, and another, another thing that we have k2 into es that is called Vmax. This is basically th this is called Vmax. So I can I can write like this. So this equation can be easily write in this form. This is how we can write in this form. And uh, this is where Vmax equal to k2 into e0 and k m k minus one by like this. Now question comes: uh, How we can what is the significance of the value of k m and Vmax? Because uh, if you look at this equation. V max is k m plus s. Am I right? So what I can tell that V is directly proportional to V max. So as the V max value increases, the velocity of reaction increases, and V is inversely proportional to k m. The as k m increases, the velocity of reaction decreases. So here, what I have pointed out, k m is equal to the substrate concentration, because we have seen this. This is V versus s plot. It is like this. Now here, suppose the, this is the Vmax, and this is uh, Vmax by two. Now, if you put this, then you will find this is equal to Km value. This is the, if you, if you V equal to if you V equal to Vmax by two. If you put in this uh, Michaelis Menten equation, then you will find that uh, S equal to Km. Now, higher the value of Km, lower the substrate affinity. This is exactly how it is proportional. And lower the value of Km, higher the, sub, the substrate affinity. That is more velocity of the reaction. So, what does it mean? They mean that, suppose I want to produce a certain amount of product. But if the Km value is low, we require less amount of substrate. But if the Km value, Km value is high, we require more amount of substrate. That is the significance of this. Now, question comes, how we can determine the Km and Vmax value? There are three different plots we have. One is line over bark plot, another the Hopsey plot, and hence null plot. And these plots are very, very simple. Money, that is, the line over bark plot is considered as an inverse relationship. Like we, we have Michaelis Menten equation V equal to Vmax S Km plus S. Am I right? Now, if we just inverse, you will get this relationship. Just to inverse that, you will get this. So here, you can see this is y, this is 1 by v, we can write y equal to this is constant, v max is constant c, and this is also constant, this I m into, and this is I can constant m into x. So y equal to mx plus c. So it is a straight line plot. So if you, 
if we if we have this slope here and this will give you the value of k m by v max and intercept here will give you the 1 by v max value now similarly we can we can see that ad hopstie plot i can write this michaelis meten equation in the form of this uh, this form we can write now if you write this form then v if you plot v versus v by s then what will this is negative negative slope so if the negative slope will be there the slope will be if you take the slope the slope will be minus km and uh, this uh, uh, that uh, this intercept if you look at this started this is v so this maximum value we can consider the v max so directly we can we can find out the km and v max value now henson henson ul plot we can write in other way if you if you look at this is like this uh, s by v equal to km by v max 1 by uh, v max into s so it is something similar to line over back plot it is also straight line plot only the thing is that the slope here slope will slope will give you the value of 1 by v max and intercept will give you the v max by because of what is reverse in case of your line over back plot so uh, question comes what are the limitations of the michaelis meten equation there are several limitations i told you when i discussed the chemical reaction kinetics when you write any kind of mathematical equation we make uh, we make a certain assumption and all the assumptions are the limitation of this equation i have given the simple example of uh, uh, that ideal gas law ideal gas what is the ideal gas law p equal to nrt and uh, what is the limitation of this equation because this is valid for the ideal gas and what do you mean by ideal gas ideal gas means it is imaginary gas this is non existence so this is this is one thing you should remember another thing is that this uh, michaelis meten equation does not take care the inhibition of the uh, it does not take care the inhibition that you know uh, that uh, take care inhibition and and another important thing is the michaelis meten equation considered one substrate one enzyme because if you look at the enzymatic reaction most of the enzymatic reaction they required the co cofactor so basically it is two substrate and one enzyme molecule so in that way this doesn't explain that uh, two substrate and one enzyme so this are the limitation of this michaelis meten equation so in conclusion i want to tell that i try to explain you that uh, what do you mean by enzymes i told you enzymes are basically their protein molecules what is protein protein is nothing but polymer of amino acids and protein has two different structure one is called globular structure and another is fibrous structure the that protein with the globular structure they they are responsible for the formation of the active sites and uh, so a protein with fibrous uh, structure they they are not enzyme because they cannot form the active sites now the two type of enzymes we have one is the endo, endo enzymes and the exo enzymes some enzymes that that work inside the cell some enzymes go out of the cell and work outside out of the cells so so then i told you what if the enzymes are there it can be classified into six different types and then i also explain the uh, how the substrate for the three different hypothesis uh, how substrate and enzyme they can interact with each other and give the product and finally i discuss the michaelis meten equation how michaelis meten propose the equation for uh, uh, rate of the enzymatic reaction and then later on bix and hellem they came forward to justify the michaelis meten equation with the help of reaction kinetics and i i try to discuss what are the limitations of the michaelis meten equation and i also discuss what is the significance of the reaction constants came and v max value and also i i i i i also conclude that that uh, under uh, that uh, it's there's a kind of limitations of this equation in addition to the what are the assumption we have made for the michaelis to justify the michaelis meten equation uh, uh, so that is all for this lecture i think in the coming lecture i shall discuss about the inhibition of the enzymatic reaction which has lot of application in the biochemical industry thank you